Okay. Uh, for the outbound part, we're going to start with our sales contracts. Uh, let's open up the outbound part of the menu and open sales contracts in. And you can see just like on the, there's a lot of similarity between the sales contract and the purchase contract. So I won't spend a lot of time going through all of it. But if you, um, you can see our existing contracts that are out there. So we can open it up and we have some choice of the primary difference between the two is, you know, you have the same types of contract, but the first thing you see here uh, is that we can have load contracts. So on the sales side, we can define that a contract is for, in this example, 25 loads. So what that means in our system, if it's a load contract that, you know, if it's 25 loads, we've estimated a thousand bushels a load in our example. So it's for positioning purposes, we're throwing 25,000 bushels onto the contract total, but 25 loads will fill the contract. It may be more than 25,000, it may be less, but the contract isn't filled until we get 25 loads shipped against it. So that's our idea of a load contract. And of course, we have the same information, um, you know, delivery periods, so you can have multiple delivery periods in that. Um, but one thing we add a little bit more and, and emphasize a little more on the sales side is a ship to address. So you can see a ship to address defined there, and, and you can do that by delivery period if you choose to. And we also have an option down here for an alternate delivery pricing. And what that does, if I add a line here and I go to a ship from address, so you can see ADM in our example has multiple addresses out here. So maybe, you know, I'm set up to deliver to the Glencoe address, but uh, maybe I need to look at shipping some to Appleton as well. So what I can do here then, if I choose ADM Appleton, I can come in then and define a different basis for the ADM Appleton location. So when we ship the tickets against this contract, if it shows up as a ship to address of Glencoe, they'll come in and pull this price. If it shows up as a ship to address of Appleton, it would look at the contract and say, okay, we need to use this price instead of the Glencoe price. So that's an option we have uh, with the uh, sales contracts. So we'll take that out of there. And if we go look at the header section of it, we have some more address. So this again, it's a lot of the other same information showing up. So you can see status, uh, def other definitions. But underneath addresses, then we also have uh, where we ship from address, a ship to name, an address, and then a FOB name. So you can have three different addresses that can all be the same or all be different, depending on how you set, uh, sold this grain and what your negotiation process was uh, when you did it. So uh, those are all the variations to the sales contract other than the purchase contract you saw earlier. All right, so the next step after we have um, created the sales contract, it's probably time to ship. And I wanna take a, a moment to mention, we're not showing it in the limited time we have today, but we do support a full load order system where we can do a load request and a load order. It's a way to plan the outbound shipments and then you tie the shipment to the load order. But we're gonna skip those pieces in, uh, in interest of time and just take a look uh, quickly at what we're doing uh, in the outbound uh, scale ticket, um, uh, Serena, and, and guess what? The outbound scale ticket is really close to the same uh, information as the inbound scale ticket. Again, you have your customer item, uh, the location. Um, <clears throat> we do support direct ships, so you can uh, um, contract with a grower to take his uh, product straight to the um, to the grain processor and not pass it through the grain elevator. That's what the direct ship piece does. Um, we have the weight similar to inbound grades um, and we do support um, destination weights and grades. And so if we um, get the destination weights and, and grades and punch them in from or import them typically from a spreadsheet, but if you've, you also have the option to, to key them in. And so we have the origin weights and we can also uh, see or edit the uh, destination weights if it's a destination weights to govern uh, contract. So that's just a couple of the difference in the scale ticket. Other than that, it's pretty much all the same. Gross tear net weights, quality information. Um, we're good to go with the outbound ticket. Okay. 
Uh, the next process, uh, again, very similar to the inbound side, is the um, outbound scale ticket application window. So if we open this up, then you can see that for, I can define it by branch, by customer, by commodity, show me any tickets that haven't been assigned to a contract or other process on the shipment side. And you can see underneath the column says allocated, both labeled to no. So I can see these tickets. I know when they were shipped, know the quantities. So if I want to apply those, select the checkbox and come down here then. And just like on the purchase side, it shows me for this branch, this customer, this commodity, all of the open contracts that we have out there right now. So if I can choose which one, I'm going to apply it to this um, contract here put the check mark in the box, it defaults in the quantity of whatever the ticket I'd selected is. And once that's done, then you can see the allocation has changed to yes. So I know then that this ticket has been applied to this contract. And at that point, it's ready to be invoiced through the system. Awesome. So the invoicing um, is a screen you go to under uh, grain ship, not invoice. So uh, since we've applied um, all those scale tickets to contracts, now the system knows that, hey, we have some um, some tickets here we need to uh, invoice, create a sales invoice for. And so th there's um, a lot of times the a customer may send you, if it's an ADM or, or CHS or um, they might send you a settlement sheet that you're trying to match. Otherwise, you're just creating the invoice uh, on your own and they, they match you. So what we see here is a list of all the outbound scale tickets, um, actually a summary list by branch and customer and commodity. And then how long these tickets have been in there as the, the earliest ticket uh, since it's been ready to invoice. So you can see this one here to BOA, that's 166 days old. We should have invoiced that a long time ago. But let's go ahead and take a look at this, uh, these, um, take a look at this, uh, uh, the details on this. Let's see, what am I doing? Okay, so you can see those six tickets, they all list here. And so it's just a matter of, okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna invoice all six of them. You, you can select them all. You, you'll you get to see then um, the uh, net amount uh, based on the contract of the quantity selected. You'll be able to add charges to it, such as freight to marriage or what have you. And you just simply select the tickets, um, see what the uh, if there's any other charges and then uh, simply hit the invoice button here and it creates a Dynamics 365 sales invoice then that can be uh, where payments can get applied uh, and, and settled uh, from there.